Our story begins as we meet Oremsi Sakura, as he finds himself on a tightrope in the middle of the night, but instead of gracefully balancing, he's flailing around like a baby giraffe on roller skates. Meanwhile, a chorus of strangers below are roasting him like a Thanksgiving turkey, calling out his questionable fashion choices and accusing him of being a delinquent. Just as he's about to fall into the metaphorical pit of despair, Sakura wakes up with a start, sweating buckets and wondering what kind of cheese he ate before bed, cut to the bustling Tampa shopping street, where Sakura struts like a confused peacock amidst the graffiti-covered walls. Suddenly, a gang of miscreants decides to hassle a poor woman, probably arguing over who gets the last slice of pizza. Sakura, feeling heroic and hungry for justice, leaps into action like a caffeinated ninja, delivering punches with all the finesse of a dancing walrus. He even throws in a dramatic introduction, announcing himself as the savior of the day. The damsel in distress, Kodoha, emerges from the chaos and invites Sakura for a meal at her restaurant. Cue Sakura's internal panic mode as he contemplates the horror of having to interact with a living, breathing human being. As Kodoha serves up some omiris, Sakura's face turns redder than a tomato caught shoplifting. But fear not, dear viewers, for Kodoha proves to be the ray of sunshine in Sakura's stormy life. Genuinely interested in his unique appearance, and not at all deterred by his propensity for pummeling people. During their heart-to-heart, -heart, Kodoha drops the bombshell that Furin High School isn't just any ordinary institution of education. It's the battleground for a turf war of epic proportions. And Sakura? He's here to climb the ladder of delinquency like it's a greased-up pole at a carnival. However, Kodoha's wise words about the importance of friendship hit Sakura harder than a sack of bricks, leaving him to contemplate his lone wolf status in this chaotic world. Just when Sakura thinks he's getting the hang of this whole hero thing, the gang reappears like a bad case of acne, wreaking havoc on the peaceful streets. The townsfolk cower in fear like startled kittens, dialing up the local superhero hotline, remembering Kodoha's pep talk about not being a lone wolf. Sakura charges into battle like a bull in a china shop, but with slightly better aim. As chaos ensues, Sakura's attempts to protect Kodoha resemble a comical dance routine more than a heroic rescue mission. Just when it seems like curtains for our clumsy protagonist, a mysterious stranger swoops in like Batman on a budget, saving the day with questionable combat skills and a questionable fashion sense, with the arrival of the Furin High students. The scene transforms into a choreographed spectacle worthy of a Broadway musical, complete with dramatic poses and flashy moves. Kodoha reveals the truth behind Furin High's newfound peace. The students, affectionately dubbed Bofurin by the locals, have become the town's protectors, swapping out their textbooks for brass knuckles and friendship bracelets. In the aftermath of the chaos, Sakura finds himself face to face with the residents he once viewed with suspicion. But instead of gratitude, He's met with hugs, high fives, and homemade cookies, much to his dismay. As Kodoha encourages Sakura to open up and embrace the community, he responds in true Sakura fashion by charging headfirst at the gang leader like a bull seeing red, Sakura grumbling like a grumpy bear woken up from hibernation. As an unsuspecting grandma mistakes him for a personal Uber and piggybacks him into Kodoha's restaurant. There, Kodoha serves up a mouth-watering sandwich with an extra side of teasing, earning Sakura the title of the Blush King for turning red at the slightest jest. Just as they settle into their banter, in stumbles Nairiai, the human embodiment of a sunshine-colored clown car, with hair brighter than a neon sign and coordination worse than a baby giraffe on ice, Nairiai manages to trip over his own shoelaces and face plant into the floor like a champion, upon noticing Sakura's unique hair. Nairiai innocently remarks that it must be the stress turning his locks white, much to Sakura's inner turmoil and outer irritation. As Kodoha revels in the chaos, Nairiai proceeds to unleash a whirlwind of enthusiasm, declaring Furin's students as the heroes of the town and inadvertently aggravating Sakura with every word. After Nairiai's departure, Sakura vents his frustrations to Kodoha, likening people like Nairiai to wilted flowers masquerading as mighty oaks. But Kodoha, armed with her wisdom and a side of Omiris. Serves up a reality check in the form of a coffee bean analogy, urging Sakura to see beyond the surface and embrace the quirks of humanity. As Sakura navigates the town, he finds himself drowning in a sea of gratitude and gifts from the townsfolk, like a reluctant hero at a surprise birthday party.
but his moment of peace is short-lived when a damsel in distress reveals Nairi's plight at the hands of bullies, cue Sakura's heroic entrance, delivering justice faster than a pizza on a scooter, and revealing Nairi's inner turmoil as a former victim of middle school bullies. Moved by Nairi's vulnerability, Sakura reassures him and earns himself a newfound friend in the process. With Nairi by his side, Sakura braves the halls of Furin for their first day of school, where they encounter So, the class clown with a heart of gold. But just as they start to settle in, they're rudely introduced to Kyodoro, the human equivalent of a thunderstorm in a teacup, ready to rain on their parade with a table-tossing challenge. Sakura and Sujishita stepping into the ring, ready to dance the tango of fisticuffs, Soa spills the tea, revealing Sujishita's undying devotion to the Bofurin leader and crew. Back in middle school, Sujishita was the undisputed fanba champion, so much so that he had an exclusive VIP pass to the Bofurin fan club, when Sakura casually mentions his ambition to climb the ladder. It's like throwing shade at the big cheese himself, triggering Sujishita's attack faster than you can say fandom drama. But hold on to your hats, folks, Sakura, the dark horse of the hour lands a swift kick on Sujishita, throwing everyone off their game. As the dust settles, an unexpected voice cuts through the tension like a hot knife through butter. It's none other than Bofurin's big shot, Hajime Yumimiya. Cue the respectful silence as everyone freezes in awe, Yumimiya dishes out some golden rules. No fighting on the first day. And remember to protect the town while you're at it. The scene is ripe for some comedic relief as Sujishita, bloodied and bruised, nods along like a devoted disciple, trying to clean himself up now that his idol has called for peace. Oh, the irony! Thanks to So's mediation skills, Sakura and Sujishita reluctantly call a truce, shaking hands with enough emotion to rival a Shakespearean tragedy. Meanwhile, Sakura's classmates are showering him with praise for his unexpected display of prowess, Sakura's feeling like the hero of the hour, basking in the glow of newfound camaraderie. Just as things start to settle down, the seniors swoop in to whisk the class away, enter Hiragi, the master of punctuality. Counting milliseconds like a pro, Sakura recognizes him from a past encounter involving Kodoha. And just when things are getting interesting, someone has to go and mention Kodoha's name, sending Hiragi into a frenzy of frantic shushing, talk about a blast from the past. Ah, the plot thickens like a hearty stew simmering on a comedy stove. Hiragi drops a bombshell about the dynamics between Kodoha and Yumimiya, hinting at some spicy relationship drama. The mere mention of Kodoha's name sends him into a panic, fearing Yumimiya's wrath like a cat facing a tsunami. And let's not forget Hiragi's trusty sidekick, Gaskuin, the upset stomach savior. Pop a pill, and voila, instant relief from the stress of secret relationships and impending doom. Meanwhile, Nairiai's pen is like a magical wand turning everyday conversations into comedic gold. He's jotting down notes, faster than a caffeinated squirrel, capturing every absurd detail for his Bofurin journal. Nairiai dives into the intricate structure of Bofurin, unraveling the mysteries of its four heavenly kings like a detective on a mission. Under Yumimiya's reign, these kings reign supreme, each commanding their own class like mini-emperors. And Hiragi? He's like the head honcho of Sakura's class, the Taman team's very own guardian angel. It's like a high-stakes Game of Thrones, but with school uniforms and Gascoon for company. Ah, the anticipation of action and drama hangs in the air like a thick fog on a comedy stage. Sakura's disappointment is palpable, like a deflated balloon at a birthday party. He was ready for epic battles and heroic feats, only to be met with the mundane task of graffiti removal. Talk about a buzzkill. As they patrol the town, Armed with paintbrushes instead of swords, Sakura's disappointment reaches comical levels. Who knew fighting crime could be so artsy? Painting over graffiti becomes their noble quest, their brushes the mighty weapons of justice, and the walls their canvas for peace. It's like watching Picasso wield a mop instead of a paintbrush. But wait, things take a hilarious turn when they reach the town's end, only to come face to face with the dreaded boundary tunnel. Nairiai's frantic attempts to keep Sakura away from crossing over are like a scene from a slapstick comedy, with Sakura teetering on the edge like a cartoon character about to take a misstep. And just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, they stumble upon a student with a swollen eye, chased by members of Bofurin. Sakura and Sujishida spring into action, 
kicking butt and taking names like a dynamic duo from a cheesy action movie. The horror on everyone's faces is like something out of a classic sitcom, complete with exaggerated expressions and over-the-top reactions. The entrance of Joe Togame, the second in command of Shishidrin, is like a sudden plot twist in a cheesy action flick. With a chill vibe that belies his true power, he's like the cool cucumber in a room full of hot peppers. But don't be fooled by his laid-back demeanor, because when he starts swinging, it's like watching a tornado tear through a trailer park. Sakura's almost pickified moment with Togame is like a classic showdown in an old western film, complete with tumbleweeds and intense stares. You can almost hear the spaghetti western soundtrack playing in the background as they size each other up, ready to draw their imaginary pistols at high noon. And just when you think things couldn't get any crazier, Hiragi pops a handful of gaskun pills like they're candy from a piñata. It's like watching a scene straight out of a comedy sketch show. As they take the beaten middle schooler to report to Yumimiya, the group enters the rooftop to find a cheerful Yumimiya tending to his vegetables. As the bewildered first years exchange puzzled glances, Yumimiya devotes a solid five minutes to obsessing over his leafy greens. While Sakura and the gang watch in bemusement, it becomes abundantly clear that Yumimiya's passion for veggies rivals his dedication to gang affairs. Sakura can't help but wonder if this leafy fixation might be the secret to Yumimiya's strength. Meanwhile, Sakura uncovers the root cause of Hiragi's perpetual stomach troubles, Yumimiya's incessant chatter. It seems the gang leader's penchant for monologues leaves poor Hiragi feeling queasy. But amidst the veggie-centric banter, the mood takes a more serious turn when Sasaki, the brave boy whom Bofurin rescued, recounts his harrowing encounter with the rival Shishirin gang. Sakura and Sujishita can't help but feel a surge of pride at their gang's heroic deeds. In a heartwarming moment, Yumimiya expresses his gratitude to Sasaki for safeguarding the city. Emphasizing the importance of protecting their community, Sakura can't help but admire Yumimiya's compassionate leadership, realizing that beneath his tough exterior lies a leader who genuinely cares for his family. As Yumimiya affectionately tousles Sakura's hair and expresses his gratitude, Sakura finds himself blushing furiously. While Sujishita can't help but feel a twinge of jealousy, it seems Yumimiya's praise is enough to turn even the toughest gang members into blushing school kids, who knew that being a gang leader involves so much vegetable talk and heartfelt moments. As if on cue, the tranquil atmosphere at Furin High is shattered by the arrival of Choji Tamiyama, the brash leader of Shishidrin, as he gleefully challenges anyone and everyone to a fight. In the face of Tamiyama's relentless onslaught, Yumimiya's demeanor undergoes a remarkable transformation, Gone is the carefree gardener, replaced by a stoic and resolute leader who commands respect with his mere presence. Even Sakura, usually quick to defy authority, finds himself unable to disobey Yumimiya's unwavering authority. As tensions escalate, reinforcements from Shishirin begin to pour in, including the formidable second-in-command, Jo Togame. With both gangs poised for battle, Tamiyama proposes a series of one-on-one -on -one fights to settle the score once and for all, it's a proposition that's met with equal parts excitement and trepidation from both sides, with the stage set for an epic showdown. And only time will tell who will emerge triumphant in this clash of titans. Gathered at Kohoda's cafe, the atmosphere is charged with nervous energy as everyone braces themselves for the impending showdown. Nairiai, in particular, seems to be on the verge of a meltdown, his anxiety palpable as he grapples with the gravity of the situation. So, ever the voice of reason offers some much-needed context. Explaining that Kohoda's cafe has become a favored haunt for Bofurin members to convene before a fight, a tradition that serves as both a source of camaraderie and a last-minute strategy session. As the tension mounts, the unexpected entrance of Hiragi and Yumimiya sends ripples of curiosity through the group, but what truly catches everyone off guard is Yumimiya's sudden transformation into a besotted fanba in the presence of Kodoha. With stars in his eyes and a newfound reverence, Yumimiya practically swoons at Kodoha's every word, leaving no doubt that there's more to their relationship than meets the eye. In a revealing moment, Kodoha casually drops the bombshell that she and Yumimiya share a bond forged in childhood. They grew up together in the same group home. Yumimiya, eager to emphasize the depth of their connection, chimes in with an affectionate declaration that Kodoha is like a sister to him, but beneath the surface. 
Iragi's discreet warning to Sakura hints at a darker truth lurking behind their seemingly idyllic relationship. Amidst the revelations and veiled threats, one fact remains crystal clear. Kodoha, at just 16 years old, stands as a formidable presence among the ranks of Bofurin, a reminder that age is no barrier to strength, resilience, and the ability to shape the fate of their tumultuous world. In a rare moment of reflection, Hiragi casts his mind back to a time when the rivalry between Bofurin and Shishirin held a different, almost nostalgic allure. There was a strange thrill in the clashes, a sense of exhilaration that bordered on exhilarating, but all that changed with the ascension of Tamiyama to the helm of Shishirin. Under his leadership, the once-respected gang began to unravel, descending into a shadow of its former self. But amidst the chaos, there's a glimmer of hope as Yumimiya reveals Bofurin's plan to engage in a dialogue with Shishidrin. To the uninitiated, it may seem like a recipe for disaster. After all, when two rival gangs come face to face, conflict often seems inevitable, yet, in Yumimiya's eyes, a fight is not just a clash of fists, but a nuanced exchange of ideas, a chance to glean insights into the minds of their adversaries, and so, with a sense of determination tinged with trepidation. Bofurin sets out on a journey across the bridge to Shishidrin territory. The air crackles with anticipation, the tension palpable. As they inch closer to their destination, the stage is set for a showdown unlike any other. 